just sitting, as we used to say, oh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't, won't even say that when we were young and in school, what we did call it, because that just sounds now so horrible, but just sit in a cross-legged position, let your knees relax. Feel your hips on the block or the blanket. Take a deep breath, let your knees really rest and relax. And if it's uncomfortable to keep your knees in this position for any reason, and you have a roll of paper towels, a block or a blanket, you can put them under your knees like this if you have to, and you even if you wanna remove it from behind you and put two here so you're even to support your knees. Um, let me take this off, even though I won't be able to see you. I can't see you anyway in those little boxes. Um, I wanted to not talk a lot today, but just start with a breath. In yoga, so yoga has eight limbs. Yoga is not just about the positions or in Sanskrit, the asanas, it's also about pranayama is one of the limbs. So um, asanas, postures is one of the eight limbs. Pranayama, the breath work is one of the equal eight limbs. And it's always important to check in with your breath because yoga is all about, it's not about moving fast and getting your heart rate up, it's about going inward and connecting the body, the breath, the spirit, the soul, the whole, so that you go inward. So we're gonna start with a four part breath, which is called also a box breath. And the reason we're starting with that is I wanna relax you. So in this crazy world that we're living in, we're about to enter into a weekend, not that one day looks different than another, but a four part breath stimulates the vagus nerve which is um, which also stimulates the parasympathetic nervous system. And, and that a lot of the breath work that I like to do does that. The sympathetic nervous system is the nervous system that gives you your fight or flight response. It's the stress response. And we need that to be alive and to be vibrant, but you also need the ability to relax. And the parasympathetic nervous system does that. It's the relaxation nerve. So let's breathe four parts, hands on your knees. Just make sure you're aligned. So rib cage over hips, shoulders over rib cage, head center. Remember that if your head is a little forward, even at a 30 degree angle, your head could weigh up to 40 pounds when it's on the center of your head. And you might just feel that difference and go, ah, the relief. Your head is between 10 and 12 pounds when it's sitting on top of your head. But picture a string coming up bringing your head to the ceiling. Let your spine be long, hands relax on your knees. We're gonna inhale for the count of four, then hold it for the count of four, exhale for the count of four, and then hold it for four. I'm gonna do that four times. So it's a box breath of four, and you don't have to worry about counting. I'll count with you. So inhale through the nostrils. One, two, three, four. Hold the breath. One, two, three three, four, exhale through the nostrils, four, three, two, one, hold it again, one, two, three, four, inhale, one, two, three, four, hold, four, three, two, one, exhale through the nose, four, three, two, one, and hold it, four, three, two, one. Inhale through the nose, one, two, three, four. Hold, one, two, three, four. Exhale, four, three, two, one, and hold it. One, two, three, four. One more time. Inhale through the nose, see if you can make that belly expand. Four, three, two, one. Hold, one, two, three, four. Exhale, four, three, two, one, and relax. Check in with your breath. Let your breath come back to a natural rhythm for you. And today I just, I always like to start my yoga classes with sort of a little bit of yoga wisdom or just something I'm thinking about. And I won't take long today because I took too long last week. But I wanted to talk about being the person who spends more time in the pause. So we just paused within our breath and held the breath after the inhale and the exhale. And in life, there is a pause between a reaction, an action and a reaction. And I was one of those people who reacted really quickly with every action. 
reacted quickly when my kids were growing up and did something I didn't like, reacted quickly with my husband. I didn't live in the pause. And that's something that um, is an intention for me every morning, patience and living in the pause and thinking before I act. So I wish for you to all be the people, a person who spends more time in the space between action and reaction. And during our practice today, we will have time to pause within the posture, live there, breathe there, take the pause. So we're gonna start by warming up the spine and do, we'll start with torso circles and we're gonna keep with the breath. So the whole thing about a vinyasa practice is moving with the breath. So we're gonna start with a torso circle. When we do this, we always wanna bend at the hip flexor. So I put my hands right here to show you, you wanna bend where your thigh meets your hip bone right there. We're gonna lean over the right leg. You can hold onto the floor, it doesn't matter. You're not holding onto your knees. And we're gonna inhale as we cross the front of the body. When you lean back, so it's really easy to remember, you're gonna exhale again through the nostril because we always breathe through the nostrils. Inhale over the front legs, exhale as you lean back and the back is straight, the spine is long and straight. And then when you come back, let's go in the other direction. In yoga, you work one side, you always have to work the other. You work the right side, you have to work the left side. Don't forget to inhale over the front of the body and exhale as we lean back. Inhale and exhale. And come to center. Put your hands up in the air as you inhale. Take your left wrist in your right hand as we lean to the right. If this is hard for you because of balance, I know I'm sitting on a block and it's kind of like I'm teetering. You can take that right hand down and put it by your side. You can have a block there to put it on. Doesn't really matter as long as you're leaning to the right. And while we're doing that, take the left hand, open up the rib cage so that you're not leaning forward. Le make sure your chest is wide open, your heart is open. So we're leaning to the right. Come center. Switch hands. Again, take that right hand first and open up the rib cage so your chest is wide and lean to the left. Your head is as in line with your spine. You're not leaning forward, you're not leaning back. Come center, hands on your knees as we just take them down, tented fingers as we move into a flat back. So we're not rounding yet. We're really bending at the hip flexor into a forward bend. Now, if you'd like to lean down, you can, and here your back might round. If you'd like to take a block and put it on its tallest level, medium level, and let your head rest there, you can for a forward bend. Breathe here. Take a couple of breaths, pause. Here we are in a pause. And walk your hands back. Take your hands behind you. These are the seven movements of the spine. So they go uh, right, left, front, back. Come back to center. Hands, take get a big inhale, bring your hands up. Click, put your palms together. And now without moving your shoulders towards your ears, keep your shoulders down, your hands go up, your spine is getting long. So this is, a, this is another movement of the spine. We're adding a half inch to our spine, our neck, our, we're, we're looking sort of where the wall and the ceiling meet. We're not looking up at our hands yet. We're not gonna take our neck back. We want our neck to be nice and long as part of the spine. Feel the blood flow going down the back. If you put your head back, you kind of um, cinch the nerves there and the, you know, the arteries and you keep your head straight, you can almost feel the release. Hands down, put your right hand behind you, your left hand on your right knee. Take an inhale and as you inhale, we're not twisting yet, I know you're ready to twist probably, but make sure you're aligned straight and as you inhale, get tall, grow that extra half inch that you just were as we reached up and then as you exhale, relax and twist over the right shoulder. Inhale and again, get long, find some length in the spine. And as you exhale, look over the right shoulder a little bit further. Inhale and cross your hands over your knees. And we only do that because I love pretty transitions. The pause, take the left hand, bring it behind you. Again, inhale before you go into the twist, 
Again, just inhale and get tall. Find some length and as you exhale, relax and look behind you. Inhale, get tall. Exhale, go a little further in the twist. You're massaging your inner organs. Yoga is the only practice that twists. You might even feel your back, you know, um, crack a little bit. It's really good for the spine. Okay, so we're center again, and we're gonna remove whatever's under us and come into table. Table, we're on all four, we're on hands and knees. Spread your fingers wide. Your wrists are under your shoulders. Your knees are about hip distance apart. It's like a fist worth or a fist and a half um, worth, and your back is straight. First thing I want you to do is curl your toes under and lift the knees up or for crouching table and engage the core. So navel to the spine, you're actually working your quads, the front of your thighs and your core. Hold that and release back into table and let the toes go back flat. You're on the front of your feet. Let's take our wrists, let's our hands, turn the hands completely around so the fingers are facing your body. And you know how we did the torso circles before, we're gonna do that again to just massage the wrists from sitting all day at a computer, typing, texting. You can almost feel it as you go over the thumb joint. You're giving your hands a bit of a massage. And here's the thing about yoga, don't do anything that increases your pain level. So. I'm not gonna say that gives you pain because I, I've been taught to understand that some people live in pain constantly. Whatever level you're at, whether it's zero or more, you don't wanna do anything that increases that. So just back off if that's the case and go in the other direction because like I explained in yoga, you have to do one side, you have to do the other. Okay, put your hands back so that the fingers are facing the front of the mat. We're gonna do a little bit of cat-cow again for the spine. So we're gonna bring our navel to the, to the mat, our tailbone to the sky, and we're gonna look our gazes up for cow as we inhale. So here's how you remember the inhale and the exhale. When the stomach reaches the mat and the belly expands, you inhale. As you now tuck the tailbone, bring your chin to your chest and round the back like a rainbow, you're exhaling because you're letting all the air out so the navel can go towards the spine. So inhale and exhale and do a few cat cows. This is all the warm up for the flow that we'll be doing. And this is important to take your time and do this in yoga. And then come to a flat back to neutral. Take the right foot back, bring it back behind you and raise it so it's hip level. Take your left hand and bring it straight out in front of you. Your gaze is down at the floor. So your neck is, your back is, your neck is straight in line with the spine. And this is called bird dog. Take a full breath here. Inhale and exhale. It's a balanced pose and it works the core. So if you're shaking a little bit, that's fine. Let the hand come back down under the shoulder. Let the knee come back to meet the other. And let's take the left leg out straight, lift it up gazes to the floor, right hand comes out in front of you. Take a deep breath. Bring your hand down, bring the leg down to meet the other. We're gonna curl our toes under, lift the tailbone to the sky as we inhale into down dog. It's our first down dog. So I want you to pedal the feet. You do not you know, there are no rules in yoga. I know that asanas, the postures, we're all taught legs should be straight. You should be in a straight B. That's really hard. If you need to micro bend your knees, if you need to maxi bend your knees, it's all good. So just pedal the feet, let the hamstrings wake up. Keep that tailbone, keep pushing the tailbone to the sky and the arms straight out in front of you. Let the back be long, the spine be long and your gaze is sort of to your toes because you're keeping that neck straight. Now I want you to plant the knees back down in a V. So the knees are open sort of towards the edges of the mat and the feet are together. You're gonna come down onto your, onto the, your heels. You're gonna pull your, push your hands out further and put your forehead onto the floor for child pose. 
So you stay here while I just explain to you that if at any point as we flow and we're gonna flow faster, you're tired, this is a pose that's a resting pose that you can come to at any time. You can live in it and just let me talk. But this is this should be your friend. So child pose is a beautiful pose. You just breathe right here. But for now, slide the hands back under the shoulders, curl the toes under, lift back up into down dog. I just wanted to introduce you to child pose. If you don't know it, it is your friend. And there's no judgment. We do what we can do. Every day is different. You could do something today, not do it tomorrow. I know I could do something on my right side, not on my left. Okay, let's walk our feet to our hands and we're hanging here. So this is forward bent. Your knees can be bent and probably at this point in the practice should be micro bent. You can hold on to your elbows. Let yourself hang in a rag doll. Shake your head, yes, shake your head, no. Make sure your head is relaxed. Push your feet into the floor. In yoga, there's resistance and surrender. There's strength and relaxation. At the same time, we root and we rise. So we're rooting our feet into the ground right now. We're relaxing everything from the hip flexor down. We're just letting it drop and relax. Let your hands go, let them hang, and slowly, slowly come up into a standing position. And this is mountain. We'll just check on our mountain pose, which is called Tadasana. <laughs> and I was, I, I actually signed up for more yoga teacher training. I'm now in class to become a 500 hour level teacher, which is the most you could be. Um, and I, I remembered something from teacher training, which is find your rapport with the floor. I always thought that was, I like those rhymey things. Anyway, find your rapport with the floor, spread your toes out, lean forward so that you're onto the balls of the feet, lean back so you're on your heels and side to side, and then find a place that you're on all four points of the foot, all four sides of the foot. Make sure your knees are over your ankles, your hips are over your knees, check your alignment. Make sure your shoulders are down and back going down your back. We, we're sitting, we're watching, we're looking at screens all day. We tend to be round shoulder, bring those shoulders back. As a matter of fact, let me show you a move to bring the shoulders back. It's called goddess. Bring your hands like that, elbows bent, shoulder height, and you can almost feel your shoulders come down the back. Here's another one, take your hands behind you in a clasp behind your spine, feel the shoulder blades reach for each other. We're gonna be doing both of those during the practice to keep pulling the shoulders back and getting our posture, our hearts open, our chests open and for the posture. But now back to Tadasana. So that's Tadasana, head is over, just again, as if there's a string in the ceiling, palms are fr facing front and there's energy in the arms. It's an isometric exercise. You are working out the arms, just standing here. If you can put energy, feel a lightning bolt of energy, come up your arms, over your, your chest and down the other arm. Here's what I want you to do, pull those toes up Engage the knees and the quads. You can almost feel the leg muscles come up. Bring the toes back down. We're about to flow into a sun salutation A. So inhale, hands touch the sky. Look up at your hands, slight back bend. Exhale as we swan dive down, again at the hip flexor. Forward bend, we've been here before. Relax the head, say yes, say no. Inhale, bring your hands up your legs to your, right above your knees, flat back. So take the shoulders back, integrate them down the back, flat back. Exhale, come back down, hands on either side of the feet. Bring your feet to a plank position. Lower yourself, you can bring yourself to your knees and do knees, chest, chin, or come down, but with a push up, chaturanga. Let the toes uncurl. Elbows come close to your ribs as you lift your head just a little bit up for baby cobra. With baby cobra, you really aren't using your hands to push. Hands could come off the floor. They're just there to, as a, as a, I don't know what, as a tool. Curl the toes under, lift the tailbone to the sky for down dog. Pedal the feet and walk the feet to the hands. Exhale, let yourself hang and relax. Inhale, bring your hands up your legs. Again, flat back, bring the shoulders back. Exhale, come back down. 
And as we inhale, we reverse swan dive, our hands up and we touch the sky. Again, a little bit of a back bend. Exhale, hands down, Tadasana. We'll do that one more time. So inhale, hands touch the sky. Exhale, come back down into forward bend. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, this is one exhale. Hands on either side of the feet, come to plank, push up. You could do knees, chest, chin. This time, bring your elbows close to the body and raise up into a full cobra. So now you're using your hands your gaze is up to where the ceiling and the wall meet. Curl the toes under, down dog, tailbone to the sky. Walk your feet to your hands. Let yourself hang. Inhale, come halfway. Exhale, come back down. Inhale, reverse swan dive, hands to the sky, a little bit more of a back bend. And exhale, Tadasana warming us up. <laughs> okay, we're going to do a sun salutation B. So the same kind of thing with a few more movements, a little bit different. So follow along. <laughs> Inhale, hands come up, but now a difference. You're sinking your hips into a chair. You want to be able to see your toes if you're looking down at your knees. So you don't want your knees to be over your toes. Now here's where we root and rise. We're rooting our hips to the ground like you're sinking into a chair. Our feet are pressing into the floor and our spine and our arms are reaching up. Lift the tailbone to the sky, bend over into forward bend. Again, inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, come down. You can do knees, chest, chin, first plank. You can do knees, chest, chin. You can do chaturanga for a push up. Uncurl the feet. This time we're gonna do up dog. Now you could come into a baby cobra, a cobra, this is your choice. If you'd like to try up dog, we come on to four points, the tops of the feet and the hands. So everything else is lifted. Shoulders away from the ears and you look up. Curl the toes under, down dog. Remember child's available to you at any time. Lift the right leg into the sky and bring it, you can, you can help that right leg <laughs> come to the inside of the right wrist. Now, before you lift the hands up, our front leg is bent, our back leg for stability. If you want more stability, you can separate the feet a little bit more. But back foot is gonna come into a 45 degree angle for warrior one. Just hands up in the sky. Again, rooting and rising. Feet are pressing into the ground. The back foot for stability, press into the pinky toe side of the foot. So this is warrior one, and we will be back here. <laughs> Bring the hands back down on either side of the front foot. You can take that back foot and point the toes again towards the front of the mat. Take the back foot, let it meet the right into plank. Come down into push up. Come up into up dog, cobra, baby cobra, your choice and turn the feet and come into down dog. Take a breath and lift the left leg in the air. Bring the left leg through, you can help it. There's no judgment. Take the back foot, turn it 45 degrees and come up into warrior one on this side. Your torso is facing the front. Hands down on either side, bring the foot back to plank, come down to push up. You can come down to your knees, up dog cobra or baby cobra, curl the toes under for down dog. Now, here's where down dog becomes a resting pose. We're gonna take three breaths here. So big inhales and exhales as you are here for three breaths before we walk our feet to our hands. Okay, walk your feet to your hands. Let your head hang. Say yes, say no, make sure there's no tension in the neck. Inhale, come up halfway. Exhale, come down. Inhale, reverse swan dive the arms as you sink the hips into a chair again. Rooting and rising. 
and just stand and come into Tadasana, mountain pose. Okay, we're ready to flow. That was just the warm up. <laughs> Anytime, come into child. I know I have some new people here today. We'll start with a, with a flow. Have your blocks or paper towels or books or whatever you have handy. We're standing in Tadasana. So make sure you're aligned. Take the right foot, step it back. Toes pointed straight ahead and let the knee come down onto the floor. You might wanna use a blanket for the knee here. I know that I, I give a list of props. The blanket is really for this purpose, to cushion your knees. Bring your blocks sort of where you can reach them. We're in low lunge. So you wanna lean forward and get this part of the hip. It's the back leg that's actually being, um, getting the stretch right here. Make sure you're facing over the front knee. You can feel that and then take the front knee, slide yourself back, flex the foot into runner stretch. And go back and forth with the breath. Inhale, low lunge, exhale, runner stretch. Inhale, low lunge. Exhale, runner stretch. Come back to low lunge. Stay here for a moment. You might wanna bring those blocks to the inside of the front leg or paper towels or books, whatever it is to bring you up. So props are wisdom, not weakness, but you might wanna take those blocks, bring them to the inside at whatever level you need. We're gonna come into lizard. Lizard, we are, you might be right here, which is both hands to the inside of the front leg or come down onto your forearms. Now, if you're down here, make sure your spine is long. So get a little long in the torso. Let that, you can't see it here. Let your front leg go onto the pinky toe side of the foot and the knee go away from you. And then bring it back towards the body. Let it hug your shoulder. Breathe. Come back up, remove the blocks. hands on either side of the front foot, curl the back toes under, lift up into down dog. Pedal the feet. Let's just bring the right leg into the air and let the right leg land inside the right, by the right wrist. Let the back knee come down. If you need to blanket it, blanket it, bring the blocks near you. We have to even everything out. <laughs> Low lunge, lean forward, let those hips Feel that nice stretch. Come back, flex the foot, runner stretch. Back and forth with the breath. Inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. Come back to the low lunge. Take the blocks to the inside of the front foot. You might need blocks, you might not. You might need them higher than this. Come down onto the forearms. Let that leg come away from you a little bit onto the pinky toe side of the foot. Check in with the body. Then bring it back and let it hug the shoulder. Let your torso be long. Press that knee into your shoulder. Take the blocks away. Hands on either side of the front leg. Curl the back toes under, lift up into down dog. Take the left foot, bring it forward. Now we're gonna come into warrior one. So we did this earlier. You're gonna let those, the back foot be at a 45 degree angle. The front leg is bent. If you need some more stability, you can separate the feet a little bit. They don't have to be, you know, if they were together like next to each other. Actually take the back toes and let them come straight, which is high lunge or crescent lunge, hands up. We're gonna do one twist. Hands in prayer position, press into them. Press your palms into each other for a, for a nice isometric exercise and then hook your right elbow over the left leg for a twist. You can't really see me because I'm facing the other direction. Toes are pointed straight ahead. Let me get stability. My right leg's back. I don't wanna get mixed up when I switch around and I'm like this. 
come back up, hands up for crescent lunge, take the back foot and turn it to a 45 degree angle. Again, I have to go this way so you can see me. We're gonna take the right hand, wheelhouse it back. So we're in warrior two. Warrior two, the back foot is now facing the side of the mat, 90 degree angle from the front foot, perpendicular. Right, is that 90? Yeah. If the feet met, it would be the heel into the arch of the foot. Your front hand is into the future, your back hand's in the past, your torso is smack in the present, in the center. Gazes over the front fingers. Deep breath, in and out. Take your, on the inhale, take your right hand, slide it down the leg, left arm comes up for peaceful warrior. Your chest is open, heart is open. Exhale, forearm onto the front leg, right arm over the ear. Again, chest open for side angle pose. Again, hands up into warrior two as we come back to peaceful. So we're gonna do a little bit of this. So peaceful to side angle with the breath. So exhale, side angle, inhale, peaceful warrior. Exhale, side angle, inhale, peaceful warrior. Okay, then come back to warrior two. So here's the difference in the hips when we go warrior one and warrior two and that little bit of a foot angle Warrior two, your hips are facing the side of the mat, even though your body is twisted and you're facing the front of the mat. In warrior one, when your foot is at a 45 degree angle, bring it there, the hip is open, unlike high lunge where the hips are both pointed in the, to the front of the room, the hip is open, but it's more, it, it's at a different angle than if you were at warrior two. So come back to warrior two, have a block handy. We're gonna to try to do our balance pose now. Actually, I'm gonna save it for later. We'll do treat later. Okay, I was gonna do half moon. We'll do that next week. Straighten the front leg as if someone's taking the front fingers and pushing them towards the front of the room. You're going to lean your torso towards the front of the room and then tip over into triangle. Now in triangle, you wanna actually feel as if there's a wall behind you or you're between two panes of glass. So the chest is wide open, energy from fingertip to fingertip. Legs are straight, gaze is up at the hand, say hi to yourself. Breathe, come back up, your legs are straight. Turn the toes so that they're both facing the side of the mat, you're in wide angle pose. Take your hands, clasp them behind you. We show, I showed you this move before that integrates the shoulders down the back and bend forward flat back your clasp is resting on your sacrum and then come down into a forward bend and your clasp comes up. Breathe. Take your hands, bring them to prayer position as you're bent over here. Take your feet and heel toe them together so that the heels are in, the toes are out and come down into a yogi squat or malasana. In Malasana, you want your torso to be tall. Your hands are in prayer. Your knees are pushing your, your elbows are pushing your knees out. So this is interesting about Malasana or yogi squat. A little child sits like this comfortably all the time until, they, until they're put in a chair. If you think about that, and then we sort of lose the ability to sit like this, which is so about functionality and mobility. Um, we need to be able to do this. This is the proper alignment for, for, for very important functions of the body. <laughs> it's important. Some people, some, a, a yoga practice is to sit like this for 15 minutes a day. This is a really good one. Okay, we have to do the other side. So what we're going to do is put your hands down, heel toe your feet so that your heels are behind your toes and you are in a wide legged forward bend. Your head is pushing down to the floor. You're gonna turn, I'm gonna turn this way because we're gonna do the other side of the whole practice now. So both toes are facing the front of the room. And at this point, it should be the left leg behind you because we just had the right leg behind you, I'm pretty sure. And we're coming up into high lunge. 
Bring the arms down so you can integrate the shoulders. Bring your hands to prayer. And this time, again, I'm facing the wrong direction, but I think you got it from last time. We're gonna hook the right, the left elbow over that front right leg into prayer twist. This torso is long. Come back up, hands reach the sky for crescent lunge. You're allowed to lose your balance. Take that back leg, turn it so the toes are at a 45 degree angle. Press into the pinky toe side of the foot for stability. And then wheelhouse the left arm back behind you. We're in warrior two. As you inhale, take that left arm down. Let it slide down the leg for peaceful warrior. Front leg is bent. With the next breath, hand on your, your forearm on your thigh. Your left arm comes over the ear for side angle. Just do a little bit of with the breath. Inhale, peaceful. Exhale, side angle. Inhale, peaceful warrior. Exhale, side angle. And this time wheelhouse the arms back into warrior two. Straighten the front leg. Let the, as if someone's taking those front fingers and pulling them to the front of the room, then tip down into triangle on this side. And remember, it's as if someone had two panes of glass that you were between. So it's actually probably the feeling is almost like you're leaning back and breathe here. Great, come back up, turn the toes to the front of the mat, heel toe your feet together. Again, heels closer than toes, toes are splayed out and come down into yogi squat. We won't stay here long this time, but it's such an important position. It's great if you want to practice this. You sit on the floor, do this. There's also, if you if crow is within your practice and you want to go to crow, this is the perfect place to do it. Um, I just want to keep moving because I always have much more to accomplish in my head than I have time for. So we're going to straighten our legs, bring our feet so that they're facing forward. You're in a forward bend and we're just going to roll up and we're gonna to come to the floor into a seated position. So we don't need a block under us this time. Let me see, make sure you can see everything about me. So feet are in front of you, toes out. We're just gonna do a forward bend. So if you have a strap or a belt, it's a great time to wrap it. Or if you don't, it's okay. Then you're just gonna come down and slide your hands down with a flat back. So you might only get to here before you feel like your back has to collapse. Otherwise, if you have a strap, you can wrap it around the balls of the feet, keeping the feet very flexed and straight. Now, if you don't have this a uh, strap, you can use a block behind your feet to keep your feet flexed. Two hands on the strap, keep your, your spine straight and just bring yourself down as far as it'll go. You can keep those knees bent. You don't wanna push the hamstrings. If you have loose hamstrings, it's actually better to bend your legs. And if you have tight hamstrings, you probably can't bend. You can't keep your legs straight. So it's always better, I think, to have a micro bend. Okay, breathe. Neck is straight. I'm straining to look at you. Neck is straight. Release that. Take the right leg, plant the foot on the floor, and then take it over the left thigh. Take your right hand behind you, fingers away from you. So your palms closer to your body. Take your left hand. You can either do this and wrap it around the knee, or if it's within your range of motion, you can hook that left upper arm around the on the inside of the knee or the outside of the knee. It's confusing when my I'm all twisted up. As you inhale, you remember this from our warm up. First of all, keep that left foot flexed. As you inhale, get tall. Don't think about twisting it. As you exhale, that's when you twist. Inhale again and get tall. So you want length in the spine. And then you can just relax a little bit. Always looking for where to release tension into a twist. It's fine to be right here and be doing it. Uncurl the legs, come center. Let's bring the left foot up. 
Take the left foot, wrap it around the right. Again, you can just hook so that your, um, by your elbow is around the knee. Take the, oh, I'm confused about my right and left because I'm all twisted. Take your left hand, bring it behind you so the fingers are pointed away from your body. Get tall on the inhale, get long. As you exhale, see if you can relax, keep that foot flexed, I'm forgetting to. See if you can relax into a twist. You can also have your arm hooked around. Get tall on the inhale and relax on the exhale into the twist. Unhook yourself, bring in the soles of your feet together into Baddha Konasana, which is bound angle pose. You're gonna hold your feet with your hands. It's almost like clasping your hands so that you're around your feet, so your feet are together in a bind. And the idea is to just allow your knees to drop. You can push them down with your elbows, keeping a flat back. This actually feels really good when you're laying down into a reclined Bodha Konasana, which maybe we'll have time to do. Uncurl the legs, bring yourself down slowly to, the, to a reclined position. The first thing we're gonna be doing is pigeon. So I want you to take your right foot, bring your ankle onto your left thigh. Take your left, your left foot off the mat and take your arms and bring the right arm through the center of the two legs, left arm around and clasp behind the thigh. You can either keep the left leg straight and flexed or bent, whatever. It's not about the left leg, it's about the right. You're gonna be using your right forearm where you're, where you're, to, to the elbow to press that right thigh away from you and to give yourself a little bit of a hip stretch here in a pigeon position. You should keep that right foot flexed as well. So both feet are flexed for reclined pigeon. This is easier to do than if we did pigeon on the mat. So for people who have some mobility issues, this is great. It's also just a really great stretch for the hips. You can bring it a little closer to you for more of a stretch. So if this isn't challenging you enough, see if you could bring that left leg with your hands, pull it a little bit in and you'll start to feel it. Let your left foot come down to the mat, uncurl the whole thing and bring the left foot over the right. Bring your hands Again, around the back of the thigh, flex your feet, use your forearm to push your thigh away, and, and let's do pigeon on the other side. Again, bring the leg a little closer to you for a little bit more of a challenge. Uncurl, bring your feet flat to the floor, Take an inhale and bring the hips up, keeping the knees, see if you can push the knees together while you continue to bring the hips up for a bridge. Clasp your hands under you so you feel those shoulders integrate down the back as you do this. Uncurl the hands and release the legs. This is just like a little taste of this. I'd like to hold it a little bit longer while I want to get you into Shavasana. So bring your feet up into the sky, just twirl those ankles around one direction, the other direction. Let the left leg go back down to the floor gently. The right leg, take it and bring it across the left as your right arm goes and forms a T-shape on the, uh, the opposite side. I'm trying to bring that shoulder down, which I can't really do, but you're trying to bring so that your torso is flat on the floor and your gaze is to your right fingers and you're in a twist. Take that right leg back up to the sky and see if you could bring it so that it touches its own side, trying to keep the hips both on the floor. So you might not make it to the floor, I certainly don't. And then bring it back to meet the left. Your left arm comes out into a T, your left, yeah. <laughs> We had the right leg going to the left side. Now we have the left leg going to the right side and we are going to, our gaze is to the left, right? For a twist. Breathe. See if you can keep your shoulders on the floor. Take that left leg back up to the air 
and let it come to its own side. Bring it back to center, let it come meet the other leg so they're both relaxed. Let's take our legs up into the air though, knees bent, take the outside of your feet, so the pinky toe side of your feet with your fingers on either side, you're bending your knees so that your knees are into your underarms and you are coming into happy baby. At the same time that you're pushing the knees into the underarms, you're pushing your tailbone to the floor. We don't wanna lift the tailbone. Your feet are flat as if the floor was coming and you were in a yogi squat. We were in that position twice. You're now in it again, think about it. We're in a squat just upside down, but the tailbone needs to try to hit the floor as your knees come into your underarms and you're pressing your knees in for happy baby. Now, happy baby, you can go side to side and give your back a little bit of a massage right here. This pose always comes right before Shavasana because it's supposed to be it's just delicious and let you have a little bit of a massage and a feel good thing. And when you think about it, think about babies again, babies are upside down holding this. I mean, how many times have any of you, I don't know, but changed a diaper and the babies are always trying to hold their feet like this. Okay, allow your legs to come down and stretch out. Just relax your legs, let your toes just splay open. Allow your hands to come down by your sides palms up. When our palms are up and open it, in yoga, it symbolizes gratitude, open-heartedness, just you're open. Relax your body. Find your natural breath. We're going into Shavasana. And as we enter Shavasana, I want you to scan the body. Start with the feet. You're looking, you're going to be a tension hunter. Start with your feet, your ankles, your knees, any, any place in your body you feel tension, really try to find a place to relax. So work your way up, your hips. If there's somewhere you can consciously relax, do so. You might feel tension as your, where your back hits the mat. See if you can release something there. Your shoulders, let them sink into the floor and relax. Don't hold them up. You might feel tension in your forehead, your jaw, top of your head. Just find a place to relax. If you can close your eyes, if you'd like to, feel free. Otherwise, a soft gaze at nothing, but just going within is a beautiful thing as well. And we'll be here for a minute or two. to be conscious of time. If you'd like to stay here, feel free. You really don't have to join me on the mat. You could just stay here. It's a beautiful place to be. Relax like that. If not, and you'd like to come out of this, take your hands overhead and give yourself a really big full body stretch, wiggle your fingers and your toes. Turn to your right side and use your left arm to pull yourself up. As we meet in a seated, Easy seat position with our hands at our hearts. Enter. In yoga, we close our practice by saying namaste, which means the light in me honors and sees the light in you. I wanna wish you all a beautiful weekend. May you find the pause to rest in, in any action to a reaction and in life. So this weekend, look for that pause Namaste. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm honored and grateful as always that you chose to spend some time with me today. Um, I'll stay around if anybody has any questions, feedback, anything.